Hi, this is Winnie with Next Level Board Games, and today we're going to unbox Boogeyman, the board game, a game by Antonio Ferreira and published by Escape Studios. This is sort of like a, supposed to be like a terror board game where you're trying to survive, which I love horror movies, so I'm super excited for this game. There's a few of us in our group that are big fans of horror flicks. So there's the front. Let's see what's inside. Okay. So first of all, it's worth noting that on the side of the box, let's see if I can hold this, this is heavy, is a bunch of artwork. So I'm pretty sure this is the boogeyman, and then this is the babysitter, and these are the kids that you play as. Oh wow, stuff on, oh, stuff on each side. Different, looks like the kids are winning in this instance. Not so much there, or here, <laughs> all right. So this looks like a poster, almost like a movie, right? Let's see. Oh my gosh. I don't think that'll ever fit on the camera, but you get the idea. The boogeyman is scary. And then you're playing as the children, trying to escape the boogeyman and the crazy babysitter. So here's um, a comic that goes with it. So tons of detail, cool graphics. So that's kind of nice. Um, I believe this is, I think it's just a comic book. I don't know that it's, oh no, it's a book of endings prologue. Huh, okay, well, let's figure out how that works, but I definitely don't want to read anything because I don't want to spoil it. Okay, so the rule book is full size, like with the box, and it's actually fairly long. Let's see here. It's like 20 something pages. So this is, I think some of these might be endings right here. Oh wow, and this is a list of people's names. Oh wow, I wonder if these are, all people who back the game? Huh. It's going to take a while, if so, to find said name in there. Okay. Yeah. So then basically this is the rest of it. So a bunch of explanation, lots of pictures. So that is helpful when you're reading instructions and they're talking about different parts and especially when you're getting familiar with them, right? We're always like, oh shoot, what's the, whatever the thing is. And I always have to look at the book and go, oh yeah, that's this. Okay. So it's nice when they put that right in the midst of when they're, where they're explaining it, at least for us. Maybe we're slow learners, it's possible. Oh, really quickly. So the game insert, really well organized. So a little like, I don't know what goes in here, but they've definitely planned for different items. So that's cool, plus it says Boogeyman. Okay, so let's see here. What we've got. So a bunch of pop-outs, here's your standees. Oh, wow, there's the boogeyman. He's pretty frightening. And then the babysitter, and then the kid characters. Big old flashlight. Obviously some doors. I'm curious. Ah, standees. Okay, so there's also some little, like, miniatures here. Let's see, oh, here we go, here's the boogeyman. Okay, so he's not very big, but there is the boogeyman. So a decent amount of detail there. I don't know if you can see all of that detail, but a lot of detail. And on, you know, honestly, sometimes when the miniatures are really big, we have a hard time fitting them in on the game, in the gameplay, right? I mean, think about if we had, if these are very big, no, these are only like one or so will fit in here and it makes, it makes it clunky on the board. So sometimes it's fun to see them bigger, but then at the same time, it's not very practical. However, it is easy to tell the difference between the babysitter and the kids, because look at the size. So same with the boogeyman. The boogeyman's quite a bit bigger than the characters you're gonna play, and that's gonna make it easy to identify them on the board. So there was some definitely some thought put into that. So that'll make that easier, I like that. So definitely looks like they're both coming after us. That's, I, I didn't think to mention that. But if you can see, they're both like really leaning forward. Definitely like forward momentum coming at you. It's very, you know, threatening. That's a very threatening stance. So that's kind of cool because they are coming after us. Okay. And then here's some of the other characters. Looks like the kids might have some weapons as well. And so there's like six of those. Same with here, the two, four, five, six, and then the babysitter and the boogie monster. So 
probably don't need the standees with the miniatures. And then over here we've got, um, oh, there's also some lock tokens. So, oops, to figure out where those go on the board. Then there's what looks like maybe like a toy box. And then some candy wrappers, the boogeyman and the babysitter. Oh, and a light bulb and light bulbs. So I'm not sure, like maybe we have a clue, an idea. Oh, look at the back. Oh, okay. So the, um, the little like toy boxes have different things on the back. The light bulbs are all light bulbs, but the toy boxes have like um, a phone and like some mail and dice. That's fun. And then maybe VPs or something. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. That's fun. So they're probably gonna be on this side and we're not going to know what they are. Probably going to be searching around looking for things. Okay, let's see if we can do this board. It looks fairly big. Oh, yeah. This is good size. Okay. Ooh. This is so cool. I've had this game for a week or two, and I haven't had a chance to do the unboxing. And so I kept telling myself not to look at it because, of course, I knew I was going to love the graphics because I love scary stuff. Now I'm like, okay, let's play right now. Okay, so we got like a little pot, koi pond over here. I see a knife by the couch. All kinds of stuff. This kind of reminds me of Lobotomy a little bit with all the different rooms or Mansions of Madness, except for Lobotomy is so dark, it's really hard to see stuff. And I'm thrilled that this one isn't. There's plenty of light in the colors to see all the detail. Really nice. I don't know if that comes through, but it is much lighter than some board games. Resident Evil is another one where it's really, really, really dark, and it's hard. It's really hard to see all the details that you like. All the effort that went into putting in all those details, it's kind of a waste. Here's a plant that's knocked over with some Halloween stuff going on, right? So there's a little banner and some pumpkins, so like we know what kind of time of year it is, and super cool. Like a little, um, like a garage type area with some. You know, like toys and things, all the stuff that you stick in there and only use like once or twice a year. <laughs> really cool. Lots of bedrooms. Anyway, okay, that is super cool. I love this. And then I noticed at the bottom, well, first of all, there's cards up here. There's like a track, it looks like. So I don't know if this is a round tracker, but there's a, a number counting here, like 1 to 10. So I don't know. That might be rounds or something. I'm not sure. And then on the bottom of the board, we've got numbers through 9 coming from both sides, but some are have a black background, some are like a white transparent. So I don't know what those do, but we'll find out. Also, there are letters on all the rooms and little numbers in different places. So I don't know if that has to do with clues or where we find stuff, but I'm excited to find out. This looks super fun. Ah, can't wait to play. I wish we could play today. <laughs> this actually looks like a glow in the dark dice. I have some dice that are glow in the dark and they look a lot look a lot like this. I wonder Ooh, I wonder if it is. Let's see. So it shows a normal D6, but that is not all what this is. I, I, I really think this might be a glow in the dark dice. It has that like opacity to it. If I could I don't know if I could. No. I'd have to expose it to the light probably. But anyway, you can see I'll just let you see like some of the stuff that's on it. What is that? Oh, it's a skull. Oh my gosh, there's several skulls. Oh my gosh. I'm going to be lucky to keep this dice. I'm going to be lucky if it doesn't go home with one of our people. I suspect it's going to get, like, accidentally taken home. Oh, I'll bring that back. Okay, that's really cool. Oh, there's other things on here, too. There's, like, um, the regular numbers, right? So parts of, like, almost like Freddy Krueger. So anyway, but there's also a couple sets of skulls, too. So I want, that's probably the one. And then the other school, this one's got to be the six, right? Because it almost has like pips in it. Really similar. Anyway, that's really cool. Very unique. Very cool. Okay. And then cards. At this point, it's mainly just cards. So this is very like a very, as far as I know, a very like story driven, very themed type of game. So if you're into that and you're into especially something that's, you know, kind of spooky, I think you'll really like this game, I think. Okay, so here's light bulbs, which relate to these tokens. So I'm guessing when you pick up one of these light bulbs, perhaps you get one of these cards. And these are all like different things that you're gonna do. Or if you look here, you can see based on the what dice you roll, you get to do different things. So 
it's like this one is going to help you do some stuff if you roll higher numbers, obviously, right? Wouldn't it be fun to have a game reward you for rolling lower dice? We happen to have a player who always rolls really low dice. And in competitive games, we're like, no, you dude, you can't roll the dice because you're never going to get what we need. It's pretty funny. But that would be kind of cool if we had a, if there was a game that came out that actually rewarded you for low rolls. To be on the lookout for that. Oh, so Babysitter's Boyfriend. So these all seem to be... Oh, until we get here. Unique. Okay, babysitter attacks, boogeyman attacks. Ooh, okay. So other than a couple of the babysitter and the boogeyman attacking, all the rest of these cards are unique. So these are all the light bulb cards. Okay, and then we've got the boogeyman cards and the babysitter cards. So I suspect these are going to be when they attack that you're going to probably flip one of these cards. And I'm just guessing. I don't know. But it just makes sense. So again, Boogeyman cards. These all also appear to be unique. Ooh, that's the same image from the front of the box. Cool. That's pretty creepy. It's creepy until it's your dog going, what are you doing in there? Which, if you have a dog, that's every dog. Why are you in there without me? Okay. As dogs do. Then the babysitter, similar stuff. So it looks like all these cards are really based on dice rolls. So it's going to be some luck, some dice roll luck. All right. So I suspect most of these are not going to be good for us as the kids, right? The babysitter's attacking, the boogeyman's attacking. Thank goodness we have our friends. All right. Ooh, here's cards related to... The little toy box tokens. Okay, let's see what's in here. I really like the graphics in the board. Like, here's outsides, cool little like stones, stone walkway, and like a little pumpkin patch, and some garden. There's really a lot. Every time I look at it, I see something different. I really don't want to know what that is on the bathroom floor, but or what's peeking up through the bathroom floor with red eyes in the dark. And why is there a hole in the bathroom? I don't know. The, the, none of those things seem good. Okay, more light bulbs. Oh, look at this. Wait, wait. Get back here. So a few more of those. But then there's ones that are on this side, the unlit version. So the tokens did that too, right? On the tokens, this was on one side. Then when I flipped it over, this was on the other. So I don't know what makes those different. I don't know. Or why we have two. But, ooh. Okay, that does not look good. So again, unique cards, also driven by dice. So the responses are going to be driven by dice. Ooh, Boogeyman attacks, and then probably Babysitter, right, too? Does the Babysitter one in here? No, maybe not. Oh, my gosh. It's the Chucky doll. Yee. Okay. Okay, I didn't see Babysitter attacks in that one, but... So these are also light bulb cards but unlit. So we'll have to figure out why those are different. Then all of these cards are, I wonder if there's more of them too. No, maybe not. Okay. All of these cards are the toy box with the light bulb above it. And I think these, oh yeah, these are definitely going to help us. They're Smurfs and like I saw add one to the die roll. Cute. Okay. Oh, there's a little robot. So cute. Okay. <laughs> and a robot. It looks like a robot almost made out of a propane tank. That could be dangerous. Okay. So that's those cards. Let's see what's left. This is the last stack of cards, but now that it's empty, you can see how well designed this is. Pretty good design. The box is very sturdy. All right. Let's see. These must be our player cards. I'm guessing that's supposed to be the crazy babysitter. So these are, I think they're all the same character. Oh yeah, look, they're different versions of her. So, yep, same name. Okay. So these are going to make the game uh, more unique because they have, she's going to have like different um, life and uh, agility or smarts and then also what it takes to kill her, I'm guessing. Okay. So that's babysitter's health. 
Then, oh, we got more, just a few more, no babysitters, okay, of the toy chest cards. Actually, on the board, there's a, oh, I see. Oh my gosh, I didn't even notice this detail. I wonder if I can, hang on, let me move all these cards because I just noticed a detail on the board. That's really cool. Tearing the board, of course. Okay, so if you look here or here, you can see that next to the 13 card is sort of like a shadow with fingers holding that card. See if you can see that. So that's in several places along this. So each time there's one of these 13 cards, the number is sort of holding onto it so that you know when exactly that card takes place. Like which part you're, like when you're gonna have to implement one basically is what I'm guessing. But that's just a really cool detail instead of just having the card. It's sort of like something creepy is reaching out and holding onto it. I like that. Okay, what else? The different um the different children so there's one two see there's a bow and arrow three four a little laser gun five another laser gun six okay so there's the six characters that you can choose from to play that's those each one has three cards oh cool okay and so then you have little abilities on the back right so this one says calm scared terrified <laughs> so each one has calm scared terrified i'm going to guess that that changes what you're able to do so that's how that works. Okay. If I, I think these cards are that right there. So these are probably rounds. So maybe every game there's really only two of these. And when you get to the fifth round, you have one. And when you get to the 10th round, you get one. That's probably what it is. But when there's 10, it makes lots of variety because it's almost impossible to get the same game twice. So that's nice, instead of just giving you two. I think that's it. Let's see, just to be sure. Uh, okay, well, I'll keep open. And that's everything that's in Boogeyman the board game. It's actually a lot of cards, um, but there's also a decent amount of like tokens because I think we're going to be doing searches and there's different doors. Um, and I just now noticed that there's actually numbers on the back of these doors. So I don't know if that's related to the numbers on the board of the rooms or if it's random. I have no idea. We'll find out. But there's that. And then there's some really cool figurines, some very detailed, you know, the Boogeyman and the Babysitter, they're going to be creepy, a ton of cards, and a really nice, well laid out game board that's big size, but like has tons of detail. So I'm excited to learn how to play this game. The cards look really cool. The graphics have, um, there's a ton of detail on the graphics. And then there's, you know, a bunch of like, if you like this genre, of course, the horror theme, I think you'll like, you know, the spooky cards. Um, if you don't, this is maybe not the game for you, but we do. So I'm super excited to learn how to play this game. Thanks for watching Next Level Board Games.